Hi guys, Rex here. Are you new to Hunt Showdown? There are 10 common beginner mistakes and how to fix them. Number one, running too much. Your sound management in Hunt Showdown is extremely important. When you're new to the game, you probably don't realize how loud your movement is. Beginners will typically run too much and the movement can be heard from quite far away. Learning when to run or when to walk or even crouch is crucial to reduce the chance of someone getting the drop on you. If you suspect or see other players nearby, it might be smart to slow down a bit to prevent them from hearing you as quickly. If other players have already discovered you, it's usually smart to move more quickly and seek cover. The silence is no longer an option. The perfect balance between moving quickly or staying quiet is ever shifting, mind you, and the correct move is rarely set in stone. Number 2. Crouching too much. This is probably one of the mistakes I see the most in very new players. Hunt Showdown can be a scary game for someone who isn't used to the brutal nature of permadeath. This goes back to the previous point of balancing the rate of movement. The new players seem to commit more to one or the other, and crouch walking for an extended period of time will make you an extremely easy target for someone who has more experience. If you suspect other players may have spotted you, crouching for too long is rarely a good idea. If you think you may get the drop on an unsuspecting team, however, crouching just might be the perfect move to help you score that first kill. Number 3. Moving in open spaces. When I was in the army, they taught us to always move close to cover when possible. When you move in open spaces, you make yourself a very easy target and leave yourself no options to retreat when necessary. This will result in you dying more often. Try to stay close to cover when you can and realize that someone could be aiming at you at any given time. Number 4. Triggering too much AI. This goes hand in hand with the first point regarding noise management. On Shodan is packed with sound traps that will trigger if you get too close. Some examples of these sound traps are horses, ducks, crows, chicken coops and dog pens. Learning how to deal with these sound traps either by moving around them, between them or even eliminating them is crucial to avoid revealing your position to other players. A skilled player will be able to track your movement with very little information available. For instance, ducks and crows will fly into the air and be visible from very far away. They will also fly away from the source to trigger them, which gives other players information about which direction you're moving in. Be wary of the AI on the map and try to reduce your overall noise. You will see more success as a result. Number 5. Predictable movement. This is a major one. New players are often very predictable in their movement once the shit hits the fan. They will typically run for cover in a straight line, which makes it very easy to drop them before they get there. Players who are a bit more experienced will typically zigzag, which means running side to side to prevent getting hit. While this is a fantastic maneuver if done correctly, it will actually slow you down and make you an even easier target if done incorrectly. Beginners will typically run in the same pattern at the same rate. For instance, left, right, left, right, as shown on screen. This pattern is easy to spot for the trained eye and makes it very easy to line up the next shot as they run straight into it. What I propose you do instead is to make the zigzag maneuver unpredictable. Make sure you don't fall into the trap of alternating between left and right and mix up the amount of time you spend running to each side. An example, run left, left, right, left, right, left, as demonstrated on screen. This tactic is guaranteed to save you more often and you can thank me later. Number 6. Caring about money or gear. Gear fear is the enemy of performance. While this concept may not have the largest impact in Hunt Showdown, it is still very much a thing for new players who haven't yet learned the economy aspects of the game and how to make more money to play their favorite loadouts. Realize that money is not a significant factor in Hunt and don't be afraid to use what you have acquired. You can always rely on a free hunter should you run out of money. By limiting yourself and trying to save money, you're not only having less fun, but you're also applying stress and worries that will impact how well you play and how quickly you improve. Number 7. Panicking under pressure. Do you ever find yourself caught off guard and you start spamming shots in hopes that some of them will land and save you? Sometimes that might be the case, but getting stressed out under pressure is a real thing and will most certainly get you killed more often than it will save you. I remember back in the day when I started playing games like Rust and Tarkov, I would get hit by adrenaline in a way that would render my aim useless and I would end up dying almost every time. The more you care about winning and the more you allow the game to stress you out, the less likely it will be to play well when it matters the most. Try to keep your head cool and make calculated, smart decisions and realize that if you do your best and lose, you still did your best. Sometimes tanking a shot in order to land the perfect headshot will help you win the fight. New players will often start spamming and consequently miss all of their shots because they are stressed out under pressure. Finding the perfect balance between spamming shots and taking too long to aim is crucial. Number 8. Repeaking too much. A very common mistake among both beginners and intermediate players in Hunt Showdown is that they repeak too much. You see someone outside of a building, take a shot and miss. What do you do? 
Most players will take another quick shot in hopes of landing the kill, which is fine as long as the situation allows it. But after the second or possibly third shot, it is time to move. Don't re-peek the same spot over and over. This is one of the easiest ways to get yourself killed, as the continuous gunfire will get you spotted and allow the enemy to line up the next shot and just wait for you to re-peek again. There will be situations where re-peeking is beneficial, but try to assess each situation and especially avoid re-peeking too much. You will survive more as a result. Number 9. Pushing alone. This is something I see a lot in my solo versus trio games. There is a clear difference between experienced teams and beginner teams. While experienced teams will flank me and make synchronized pushes, beginners will often rush in one by one and die. If you are playing in a team, make sure you take advantage of strength in numbers. Try to avoid pushing alone. If three players push together, chances of survival is much higher, even if one or two of you die. The one thing that single-handedly gets me killed the most in my solo games is getting pushed simultaneously from multiple angles. Number 10. Not knowing when to retreat. Over committing to a fight is a free ticket to the lobby. Experienced players will know when to back off to recover and reposition, or even back out of the fight entirely if the situation calls for it. While taking every fight possible is fun, it will also result in losing more. It is totally alright to back off and assess the situation, and even leave the match entirely if all the odds are against you. Let's say for instance that you push a boss lair and end up being shot at by a sniper team somewhere behind you. Now you have two teams taking shots at you, and your medkit charges and consumables are running low. Your teammate died once or twice, and now the sniper team is pushing closer. In this scenario, it is totally fair to back out, reassess, and potentially leave the match to fight another day if you feel like it's a lost cause. Maybe the best option is to let the other two teams fight it out while you hit up a supply station for extra healing, ammo, and consumables, and then push in after you're recovered. Finding the right balance is key. Number 11. Not following Rexner on YouTube and Twitch. By following me on YouTube and Twitch, you will get more information, catch the best moments, and be able to take part in the live action and ask any questions you might have. This simple mistake can be fixed by smashing the subscribe button below and heading over to twitch.tv slash Rexner and follow me there. A huge thanks to all of my Patreons for supporting the content on my journey to becoming a full-time content creator. You guys are making the dream possible and I cannot thank you enough for it. If you would like to support what I do and help me get closer to my goal, head over to patreon.com slash Rexner. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you would like to see more content of this type, let me know in the comments below. I stream live on Twitch 3-5 to five days per week. If you want to support the channel further, there's a Patreon page and you can find my schedule in the Discord channel. I'll leave all of my links in the description. Thank you so much for watching.